Hello friends, welcome back to Cine World. Today I am going to explain a heist thriller film from titled Inside Man. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Dalton Russell can be seen speaking into the camera, saying that he executed a meticulous bank robbery on a Wall Street bank and managed to walk right out the front door without getting caught. The only remaining question is how he actually did it. He and his team are seen driving up to the Manhattan Trust Bank, masked as painters. Then, Dalton walks into the bank first and knocks out the cameras. Their well-orchestrated plan gets them from securing the door to having the people in the bank on the ground in a matter of seconds. A police officer walks up to the bank when he sees smoke coming out of it, and before he can complete the call, Dalton comes out and tells him that he has hostages and if the cops come near the door, he'll start killing them. The officer calls it in quickly, and an entire barrage of NYPD blue comes rushing to the scene, assessing the situation, setting up and securing the location, while shutting down the entire block. Simultaneously, the owner of the Manhattan Trust, Arthur Case, gets informed which branch of his bank is being held up with hostages involved. Hearing the news makes Case very nervous, so he calls a high power broker, Madeline White, to find a way to protect his very important family heirlooms held inside a safety deposit box in that branch. However, she gives him one rule, that if he does decide to tell her what's inside the box, even though he doesn't need to, and he lies to her, her promise of discretion, as well as their agreement, will be void. Case doesn't lie, but doesn't tell the truth either. He simply wants her to make sure that the secret contents of the box either stay locked in there or disappear. Madeline agrees to work with him. Now, on the other side of the situation, are the two other major players in this story, the detectives Frazier and Mitchell, from the hostage negotiation team. Frazier is a veteran cop who's much too smart to work for the police, but he has a small internal affairs matter hanging over his head that he probably had nothing to do with as he will keep on insisting until the end. The detectives are seen rushing to the bank and stepping inside one of the police vans to talk to CPT. Darius, who's in charge of the scene. He tells them that no one knows the number of suspects or hostages inside the bank yet. Fraser tells Darius that he'll let him get control of the crime scene and once he has more detailed information, he expects him to give him a briefing. Meanwhile, he and his partner will be in the dinner. Meanwhile, the robbers take the hostages down to the safe room and line them up, then separate them into bank employees and everyone else on the other side. Dalton instructs the hostages to take their keys and phones out of their pockets or handbags and hold them in the air to be collected by his associate. One of the bank employees doesn't give away his cell phone and says that he's left it at home. Dalton doesn't believe him, so he finds a phone that has his number on speed dial and calls it, revealing that it has been left in his office. When Dalton finds that out he takes the man to the office and beats him savagely, making an example out of him to the others. Dalton walks out of there splattered with blood, so one man gives him his keys, and a boy shows him his video game console, which the robber tells him to keep. Next, Dalton reshuffles the hostages again, making them line up by their gender, and tells them all to strip to their underwear. Everyone except an older lady does it so his female associate takes her to another room, while he instructs the rest of the hostages to put on the suits and the masks they are being handed. Later, an elderly hostage who works in the bank begins feeling sick and tells them that he has a heart condition. Dalton and one of his associates let him go and the police have him instantly on his knees while he tells them that he was sent out to tell them not to come close to the bank or he'll throw out two dead bodies. The team of robbers checks on the other hostages and then going through the bank, passing the safe in the deposit boxes, and lastly stopping in a back room with office supplies. Sometime later, the robbers can be seen preparing the room for something and digging through the ground. Darius fetches Frazier and Mitchell and tells them about the man the robbers let go of. The released hostage has told them that he thinks that there are four perps in the bank. Darius also informs the detectives about how he's managing the perimeter, that he's awaiting video footage from the bank when the heist began, and that all the phones from the bank have been diverted to them. That's Darius's end of the game, now Fraser has to decide how to move forward. The detective thinks that it's still not the right time to call the robber, because he wants to see what he does next. During the wait, Mitchell finds the robber's van which they will dust for prints, even though it was probably stolen. When Frazier finally decides to call the bank, Dalton just lets the phone ring and doesn't pick it up. The police get the footage from the bank's security cameras and they see how the robbers managed to disengage all of them, speculating that they used infrared lights to do it. Suddenly, the police see movement in front of the bank. Simultaneously, Madeline goes to the mayor of New York and asks him for a very big favor. 
She tells him that she is monitoring the hostage situation in the bank for a client and asks him to get her inside with the police to be extended every courtesy to execute her. Task. The mayor says that it's impossible, but Madeline insists, and he agrees to grant her the favor. The robbers let another hostage go with a message for the police strapped on him. As one has come to expect from U.S. cops, they see the man is a Sikh but think he's an Arab terrorist and disrespect his religion by taking off his turban. They take him away quite roughly and later he's seen in the diner, being questioned about what he saw by Fraser and the others. The Sikh is rightfully very angry, and it takes some convincing to get him to talk about what has been going on in the bank. He confirms the information about the perps being and tells them that there are around 20 to 30 hostages. Later, the cops read the demands that were sent out with the hostage. The robbers are asking for two buses and a jumbo jet to be delivered by PM. If the cops break the deadline, they will kill one hostage every hour. The bank is also secured with plastic explosives. Darius says that they can't get a plane and that the bus is a maybe, while Fraser tells them that until they talk to him, they will get nothing, not even a cup of coffee. Suddenly, Case is let into the van asking if he might be of some assistance and about the robber's demands. The cops tell him that they want a jet and the old man asks if they want him to arrange one for them. They're stunned. He wants to stay there and see the progression of the situation, but he is escorted out of the van. Later, the robbers demand food to be brought in which gives the cops an opportunity to bug the bank and hear what they say. The officer in charge of the tapping devices suggests they use pizzas so that people can group around the food more and talk when Frazier asks her about a special listening device she has there. She tells him that it's a digital recorder that can take up to seconds of material. Meanwhile, one of the hostages acts like a tough guy, so the robbers give him a reminder about who's in charge in the bank and drag him across the rooms with all the hostages, then take him inside the office supply room. The order of food finally arrives at the bank and Fraser oversees the drop, introducing himself to Dalton. He tries to get the robber to open up to him and tells him that he would love to talk to him if he picks up the phone. Dalton says nothing. Later, they listen to the audio from inside the bank and realize they are speaking in another language, so they guess it's Russian. Fraser sends Mitchell to find out from the hostages if they heard any Russian or Russian accents when they were in there. At the bank, the robbers create a situation with the hostages, moving one of them to another room. Then, one of the robbers pretends that she's a hostage too, and goes back to the first room. When the other robber takes her to the room, he takes out another female hostage and takes her to a third room. Later, the actual female robber can be seen digging the hole in the supply room. A cop with Russian heritage listens to the tape and tells them that the language isn't Russian, but the closest he gets to is Bulgarian, and calls it Central European, sort of. Fraser gets the idea to play the recording over the speaker and get someone from the crowd outside that can recognize what language it is. A construction worker recognizes the language as Albanian because his ex-wife was born there and comes forward with the information. The police try to reach the Albanian consulate but get nowhere with them, so Fraser tells the construction worker to call his ex-wife. When the woman arrives, she sees the help they want from her as an opportunity to make her parking tickets go her way. Fraser tells her to listen to the recording and tell them what it says. She laughs, saying that not only does she know what they're talking about, but that she also knows who's doing the talking. The cop is excited that he might find out who it actually is, so the woman repeats her request about the parking tickets before she answers, and when she gets the reply she wants, she tells them that it's the voice of the former communist president of Albania, Inver Hoxit. The realization that what they have been listening to is a random tape, because the robbers knew they were going to bug them, changes the game for the police. Meanwhile, in a series of scattered shots from the bank, Dalton can be seen in the safe and around the money, making it look questionable if they really are there for the money. A bit later, he and one of his associates are seen opening up a safety deposit box. It contains certain documents that they seem to have been initially after as well as diamonds and little baggies in the jewelry box. Dalton takes the document and the other one closes the box up again. Around the same time, the mayor arrives in front of the bank with Madeline to have a conversation with Detective Fraser. He introduces them, and she quickly presents Fraser with a limited account of the reason she's there. The detective is reluctant to accept her supposed help, so Madeline and the mayor use some nice, old-fashioned blackmailing to convince him. Sometime later, Dalton finally picks up the phone and talks to Fraser. The conversation goes pretty much nowhere with Dalton just repeating their demands and threatening the detective to kill hostages if they aren't met in the time frame he set up. The same happens in a later conversation, with Fraser sure that he's the one pressing the robber for more time, still unaware that the one who is stalling is Dalton by playing. 
games with him. Fraser offers Dalton some more food, and he asks for sandwiches. In the meantime, the robbers finish digging the hole in the supplies room which will be a big part of how the robbery is completed. After his call with Dalton, Fraser lets Madeline talk to him as well. She says something to him that convinces Dalton that they should have a conversation face to face. Fraser takes her to the bank, worried that she might make a wrong move, but Madeline tells him that she got to where she is by collecting friends and not enemies. She is searched when she gets to the bank then proceeds to talk to Dalton. Madeline gives him an offer of a short prison sentence and million dollars when he gets out in return for the contents of the safe deposit box. Dalton makes it clear that he knows who Madeline is working for and that he knows Case was a Nazi collaborator in WW when he worked in Switzerland. She only asks to go to the deposit box, prompting him to show her what he found there and tells her that he'll be keeping it as a guarantee that if he is caught for the robbery she and her boss will help him get out of it. When Madeline gets out of the bank, she has an off-the-record conversation with Fraser telling him that she made him another offer that he's considering. Fraser asks her about what she thinks Dalton is like and Madeline tells him that he's smart and that he's not a murderer. Sometime later, the three cops continue talking about Dalton, trying to figure him out, when Fraser decides to switch up the game a bit and stop playing by the book because he thinks Dalton knows at every step they will make. He calls him and tells him that he will give him his jet if he allows him to come inside and check the hostages first. Dalton agrees and we see Frazier walk inside the bank in the next sequence. He's taken to the hostage rooms where he sees that all of them are alive and well when he sees the boy and is denied taking him out with him when he asks. Before he leaves, he promises the hostages that he'll take them all out. Frazier confronts Dalton and tells him about the tactical team waiting outside but the robber outsmarts him again. As they reach the door Frazier tackles him and tries to take off his mask but is stopped by one of the others in time. Dalton is pissed at him and asks for the buses again. After that, Dalton goes to the supply room and asks his associate how long it will take him to finish up there and he says that it will be in around two to three hours. Frazier gets back in the van and tells Darius that Dalton isn't a killer and they should wait and see what he does when he calls him again and tells him to point their cameras at the window. As soon as they do that, they see Dalton holding a gun to a hostage and killing him on camera. The consequence to that is Frazier getting booted down in the case with Darius taking his place to call the shots in the situation. Naturally, Darius plans to get the tactical team inside as soon as possible but getting inside the bank presents him with a tactical nightmare with very problematic outcomes. The only solution to their problem is using rubber bullets so they don't kill anybody. Mitchell thinks that if something goes wrong again that Frazier will be the scapegoat, but he tells him that he caught a deal with Madeline and that he'll make detective first. Great. Suddenly, before Darius storms the bank, Frazier discovers that the robbers have been listening to them the entire time via a transmitter in the drawer, so he calls the captain to inform him. However, Darius decides to proceed. When Dalton hears that, he throws smoke grenades and they get the hostages out of the bank before the cops can come in. As soon as everyone comes out the tactical team gets them all down on the ground and arrest everyone. Then, the tactical team goes inside the bank to clear it from the robbers or find any possible bodies. They check all the rooms, the safe, and the supply room, but find nothing. Fraser, Mitchell, and Darius come down and the head of the tactical team tells them that they didn't find the body of the hostage and that nothing was taken from the bank. Furthermore, the cops realize that their weapons were toys and that the killing of the hostage was just a hoax. Meanwhile, the hostages and all of the robbers are being taken into a police station to be questioned. No one knows who the hostages and who the robbers are so, sometime later, Frazier's captain tells him that the case no longer exists. Frazier didn't expect that, but he also won't be letting it go. Before he leaves, the captain tells him that his problem with Iowa is gone. Later, Frazier finds a clue to the secret safe deposit box from the bank and begins putting it all together. He meets with Madeline again and shows her his recording of her and the mayor blackmailing him about his problem. In exchange for not getting the recording out, he asks her for information about Case's box. She only gives him a hint but tells him to let it go. Madeline goes to speak to Case later and tells him that Fraser won't be a problem but that Dalton will be hanging on to the document from the box as insurance against his retaliation. Furthermore, Madeline knows that there were diamonds in the safe along with the document and Case tells her that there is also a Cartier ring that belonged to some of his Jewish friends. He didn't save from the Nazis because they paid too well. He pays her before she leaves and she pretends that she isn't judging him. 
one week after the heist, Dalton can be seen, finally revealing how he managed to pull off the heist. He was hiding inside the bank, behind a trick wall they built in the supply room. Dalton has the diamonds, the ring, and the document. He breaks through the trick wall and gets out of his hiding spot, then walks through the bank like he's just another client. All of his conspirators can be seen waiting for him in front of the bank as Frazier and Mitchell arrive. Dalton bumps into Frazier as he's walking out of the bank, but he doesn't recognize him. Frazier goes into the bank with a court order to open the deposit box and inside he finds chewing gum, the Cartier ring, and a note saying follow the ring. The detectives go to speak to Case and Frazier asks him about the box, having figured out that it's connected to something bad. Case tries dodging all of his questions, but Frazier shows him the ring, saying that once he learns more about he would surely know what those bad things are. When the cops leave, they laugh because they know they have Case exactly where they want him. Later, Frazier interrupts Madeline's and the mayor's lunch to show them the ring and give her the number of the war crimes issues office in Washington, D.C. She will gladly call that number, so he gives her the pen with their recording successfully taking down a Nazi, overplaying a high-powered broker and an aloof mayor. The only thing left for him to do, since he's also made the first grade, is to go home and make love to his wife. In the final image of the film, we see him finding a diamond that Dalton has left in his pocket when he bumped into him in the bank. Thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos.